So when did you purchase this tractor? Uh, July, July last year. So we've had it for nine months, I think, so far. Okay. We've used it for about 350 hours so far. What are the main uh, tasks? Main tasks are foliage spraying um, with our fully electric sprayer that uh, we've got that, that runs off that. Yep. And I've got lots of roll I can share with you on that as well. So you can okay. see that in action. Uh, and of course, mulching and mowing um, are the big ones as well. Plus, we've used a lot of hours to start to program some of the automation. First six months, we had some factory problems. Mm -hmm. It actually wasn't because the tractor was electric. We had some hydraulic, uh, yeah. hydraulic pipe issue, um, some hydraulic valve issues. So um, more on the hardware part. All the hardware parts. And another thing was the PTO. We had a spacer in there break on us, which caused a lot of like um, shrapnel to end up in the mm -hmm. hydraulic system. Um, which meant that the tractor was you know, having some overheating issues. Monarch came over, replaced the whole PTO for us, put a new hydraulic buffer tank in there, and we've never had a problem again. So basically you were telling me before that you also tried the autonomous yep. uh, function. So who is working with it right so now? So we are still very new in the piece, and the reason that we haven't got it up and running is we got the tractor, we started working on the automation, didn't finalize it, and then we went into harvest, which is the time we just needed to use the tractor actually for a tractor. So the goal for the next couple, uh, a couple of months now that we're past harvest is to actually make sure this tractor can drive the entire orchard without a driver. And the reason that I think that's so important is that we don't hire staff to do the monotonous robotic jobs that could be done by robots, like driving up and down rows, mowing or spraying. spraying. But they have to do those jobs at the moment. So it's really boring jobs for them. But really what we hire our staff for is the tree care, the things that actually require humans to be really good at understanding what's going on with the tree, how to prune it correctly, actually sort of doing the analysis to figure out what, what nutrients it needs, that kind of thing. So we really want to move all of the robotic jobs away and actually give it to the robot and allow our staff to be, help us become better growers. And again, it's all about building or, or increasing the amount of yield that we get, which is from concentrating on our trees, not tasks. Uh, the first task you want to automate are mowing, spraying, yep. anything, shredding? Yeah, mowing, shredding, spraying, um, but I think the even bigger one than that is putting a camera system on the back of this tractor that 3D models the entire orchard, and then every time you drive, the, 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 you can set the tractor to go off and basically build a Google Street View of your entire orchard where you can go look at each individual's tree, you can get all the analysis done on what's happening with the tree, what the yield is looking like, what the, any health implications, that kind of thing, so that we can get all the data on a per tree basis so that we can start to make really good decisions. So every part you would like to scout a little bit your, your orchards That's to exactly see how right. it's evolving and basically make a map where you can treat or adapt your Exactly, your and get all the data like this. We're talking now about technology that can go that is so detailed, takes thousands of photos per tree as it drives by, we'll be able to look in the individual blossom and see if it's been pollinated or not. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to get down to that degree. And this is something that we're not going to have done by next year. It's probably going to take three or four years, but this is how we become better farmers. Like I come from a technology background. Data is so important. You come to horticulture in New Zealand, there's a serious lack of data. So how do we make the best decisions to get the most out of the farm that we have? So that's your future vision of uh, this mission. So first of all, you automate it for mowing and spraying. Simple tasks. Simple tasks. You then, once you have it automated, you can start to do new tasks that never could have been done before because they were never economical to do so. Yeah. Uh, so that's an uh, improvement you, you have in mind. Do you have any other improvement? Uh, on this machine that you could maybe the battery uh... so this well this thing here this is the battery in here mm -hmm. that's over 100 kilowatt hours of battery storage right so that's larger than most evs on the road right it's a really powerful uh, any other thing uh, i think like i tried the machine and it's really user friendly yep uh, you can do uh, easier than that but anything else on the the mechanics or uh, that you could maybe more talk about? Not I really. Mean, like I mean, I think the when uh, Monarch came back, they added a whole bunch of improvements to it. Um, one of the ones was the we put a they put a hydraulic buffer tank in there, which got rid of a lot of the hydraulic noises, which is why it's so quiet now. When it first came to us, it would make all sorts of mm -hmm. hydraulic sounds. Um, and it wasn't really the electric experience that I think you were hoping for, which is the really quiet experience. Um, but this has been like full credit to Monarch. They flew over to New Zealand yeah. to come and install this upgrade for us 
so, so that we can keep so, so pushing So you already forward. get all the improvement that were missing at the beginning? Correct. And now you get a version that is definitely what you were expecting. Exactly. Still and not perfect because you're a farmer, I guess. That's it. That's it. And I think the thing about this is Monarch realizes that this tractor, this individual tractor, has had more eyes on it than any other tractor that they have yeah. produced so far. So just oh, just because of the number of visitors we have coming here, mm -hmm. the number of people that get come to drive this, because my real passion is an electrification of farming, um, and so therefore, I'm always open for people mm -hmm. such as yourself to come and drive the tractor. So uh, just uh, the way you use the, the tractor, I think people, since it's electric, nobody knows. There is no tank, fuel tank. Correct. So you just work all day, let's say eight, seven hours, yep. and then you just go to the shed, Correct. plug it. Charge it overnight. Charge it during the day if we can. If we can charge it off the solar, that's the cheapest way. Yeah. Um, but obviously sometimes you want to charge it overnight because you're using it every day. Yeah. Um, so it just comes down to, but yeah, I mean, it's charging. How long does it take for, for it's a fast charger? Or? Uh, it's a, we use a three phase AC charger. So we didn't go for DC charging um, because that would have been too, that would have just been a lot more expensive. And on our farm, we just don't need that. Yeah, um, yeah. So there will be there will hours. be farms so it takes us about four hours five hours to charge this battery okay. from empty to full um, but that's okay for us we don't need any yeah. faster than that but you can spend more money and get fast charging if you yeah. want to if you um, have a farm that needs like you said if you have a farm that need more uh, productivity you probably need a fast charger that, so you can exactly shift. right so there's two options the first is this battery is swappable so you can just buy multiple batteries for this tractor and that way you can get 24 hour runtime if you want to. Um, or the other one is you can charge it in 20, 30 minutes with a, with a DC fast charger. And both of those are just added expenses that we didn't need. So yeah, thank you very much for, for your time. Let's see the machine uh, working right now. That's good, and, uh, let's put uh, yeah, it in action. Thank you for opening your doors and uh, hosting us. Anytime.